Here we go again, another exciting episode of the Patterson Program, and today Irene is going to share with us how she has made tremendous improvements on the Patterson Program. G'day, Irene. Hi, how are you, how are you doing, Clint? I'm doing fabulously well. The weather has changed here in Florida, so instead of being uh, smashed outside with humidity and heat, it's, it's nice, and, uh, nice and mild. How are you in uh, Texas? Excellent. Got a little bit chilly overnight. We have wind and rain, but it's better than the 100 degrees in the summer. So I definitely enjoy the weather now. <laughs> yes. Nice. Well, we've got lots of nice things to talk about today. Uh, you uh, have been through a lot of pain in the past, uh, you tell me, in our sort of pre-chat um, wrap. Um, and um, what well, I know uh, some uh, information about you as you were um, uh, part of our support group. Um, and also, um, you've transformed all of that pain into a pain-free life and you're not on any medications and yet you have rheumatoid arthritis. So this is quite extraordinary. So give us the 60-second snapshot of before and after in your words. Well, roughly it started about four and a half years ago. I experienced a lot of pains and swelling in my fingers. So when I did uh, heavy yard work, housework or anything, my fingers would swell up and the pain would just linger in my fingers. And Slowly, gradually, over the years, it would get worse. And then two years down the road, I saw a doctor. He actually determined I have osteoarthritis and um, based on the x-rays and uh, blood results. And then <clears throat> I changed my diet. And for another two years, the pains got even more worse. I couldn't even open up jars or type a keyboard and saw another doctor. And then they, they determined I have rheumatoid arthritis. And that was this year. Okay. So was that uh, sort of about six months ago or so? Yes. Yes. Roughly about six months ago. Okay. All right. So before we go into all the detail, um, how are you now compared to how you were six months ago? Oh, I feel so good. I'm actually pain-free at the moment. So since about since I started the Pedersen program, immediately I was pain-free after the cleanse and uh, I'm enjoying life again. I mean, I still have a little bit of swelling in my fingers but I can mountain bike, I can kayak, I can do yard work, so pain-free. So it's, it's changed my life again. It's remarkable, isn't it, how quickly yeah. the results can be um, obtained. In your case, what I'm picking up is that, um, you know, you might have had a, a dramatic sensitivity to one of the major um, aggravators for everyone. Like it might have been oils or it might have been meat or it might have been dairy. And we might never know, but what we know is that maybe one of those three groupings you were getting almost all of your pain from. And so just by eliminating one of those three groupings, you hit the bullseye immediately, which is, which is sensational. Yeah. And, um, I mean, to go a little bit more into your program and four weeks into your program, I discovered actually the big culprit and that was the nuts. I, as soon as I ate the cashews and the almonds, even dry roasted, all my pains came back. Uh -huh. So I have nuts since then. That's the only vegetable or grain or nuts that, that, uh, from all the groups that I have problems with. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. So that tells us that maybe it's the fats um, because, uh, you know, they are high in fat. And I'm just curious to explore this a little bit more uh, before we even get further into your story. Um, how are you with avocados and olives? I'm okay with avocados and olives and I'm eating them now. That's the weirdest thing. Okay. Well, <laughs> there we go. And this is a good, good lesson in itself. Sometimes yeah. there's just a particular food group that we have allergies to. And this is why, um, you know, although Patterson program, uh, has, a, a um, uh, one size fits all in terms of the process forward. The caveat in there is that the person must do their own testing and you mm -hmm. have done that. You've followed the process and yes. you've uh, done your own testing. And, and because you have done things systematically, the nuts have jumped out at you clear as anything as being a problem. Yes. Yeah. That was the only problem I discovered during the whole program. Okay. Well, there you go. So what a remarkable discovery. That's, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. I love it because it just shows us that all of us have just a, a different uh, breakdown in terms of what we're able to to um, yeah. to digest. Okay, well, let's now go back a little further. Um, but let's maybe mix this up and change this a bit. Do you? What was your diet like before you got any kind of arthritic symptoms? And what did you? Would you? 
honestly say that you ate a lot of and your general kind of lifestyle? Okay. Well, yeah, I had the American standard diet and I must admit, I never ate salads. <laughs> and now I eat more salads than anybody else I know. <laughs> So, yeah, it was a problem, and I, I blame myself. I mean, I was eating junk food, pizzas, pasta, um, hardly any salads. And uh, I guess that was the main reason why I started having the arthritis. Yeah, I think it is the reason. And it's funny when we look back at what we used to eat and how, like, I used to think eating healthy was, um, you know, having some vegetables with a massive amount of meat. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, and that's kind of it, you know, like a bigger piece of meat and uh, and some vegetables I used to think was a, sort of a rounded kind of meal. Mm -hmm. And um, although I didn't eat much fast food, I used to think that, you know, having cereal for breakfast, some kind of high yeah. sugary sort of commercial, regular kind of packet of cereal with regular milk, that that, that was okay, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very, very, very basic thinking and I never considered myself someone who was stupid. I just thought yeah. that was acceptable. I was never challenged by that. I never saw anyone else eating anything different than that. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And when, and when they de determined I had osteoarthritis and at that time they said my sugar level was very high, my A1C, when they did the blood test, I changed then like a lot of people, the paleo diet. Right. And I did feel good in the beginning. But then my pains all came back really, really bad. And now I'm thinking it must have been the nuts because I cooked with a lot of nuts at that time with the paleo program because uh, the desserts have cashews, uh, like Brussels sprouts, you roast them with pecans and all that. All these nuts in the paleo diet more likely caused, uh, caused a lot of inflammation and pains. Mm -hmm. And the coconut oils and, of course, the yeah. meats. No yeah. one's going to get well if they keep eating meat, and I don't care – if you show me 10 testimonials online of someone who has done well on the on the paleo uh, paleo diet, you show me that person in two years from now and I'm going to show you someone in agony and I'm mm -hmm. going to show you that same person's going to be on medications because you can't keep putting meat into the gut and yeah. have a healthy gut. It just does not work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really know. Uh, so, and I was eating healthy and now I realise I did it all wrong. <laughs> but, but it's better to know than to go to yeah. your grave early. You know, like because the average person with rheumatoid arthritis life expectancy is 13 years less than someone without the disease, okay? And that's not because necessarily that the joint pains, um, you know, drive us to end of our life. It's a multitude number of reasons, and they include the fact that the uh, someone who has rheumatoid arthritis is more prone to get other conditions. Uh, so, and, and I strongly feel that's because of medications that they're put on. So if you're on an immunosuppressant drug, your immune system can't defend itself against all sorts of other things. And so you're much more likely to get something like pneumonia. Uh, mm -hmm. and so on, on the, um, on the paperwork that goes with someone when they pass away, the actual, uh, uh, cause of death will be pneumonia. Um, no one dare actually write why they got the pneumonia yeah. um, because that's threatening to, you know, the medical community. And, you know, they, no one wants lawsuits going out to various immunosuppressant drugs and stuff. But that's the reason that they get these uh, diseases. And, of course, when we have rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, there's a disinclination to want to exercise. And we know that there's a direct relationship between exercise levels and longevity. And so, you know, there's just a couple of examples and the will to live can be slowly drawn out of you as you enter, your, I guess, your elderly years and, and life's been a struggle for a very long time. And I guess, like, willpower isn't as high. And there's probably a multitude of other reasons and so on. But, um, but, but at least, I guess, to, to, to loop this back to your comment, at least we realise this now and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and not continue to put the the inflammatory foods into a body that's inflamed. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And uh, it, it's life changing. I mean, even um, um, I had a rash on my body as well at the same time. And uh, even the dermatologist, he wasn't sure if it was connected with my arthritis, but it went uh, immediately away as soon as I ch uh, started the Patterson program. So I assume all these oils would have caused also these rashes on my body. 
Perhaps. And, uh, you know, I'm only speculating like uh, others. I don't claim to know exactly what the rash yeah. was caused yeah. from. Um, and I don't see a, a, um, a correlation all the time between rashes and a particular food group. But um, when the body feels better, everything improves, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just yeah. like uh, the body just cleans everything at the same time. And yeah. so these rashes and, and whatever other little you know, problems that we're facing or big problems that we're facing yeah. simultaneously all uh, improve. So, wow, uh, fantastic. Well, can you give us some tips that you may have um, uh, accumulated through this process that's helped you to get um, really, really outstanding results that you think may not necessarily be obvious, that if you were to, if someone was doing the program right now, um, mm -hmm. listening to this, what, what words of advice or encouragement would you give them that you found that helped you? Okay, well, I, I know it's, there's a lot of planning involved with this program. Um, I mean, especially I work almost full time. Uh, and uh, so on my days off, I need to prepare and do batch cooking, like prepare the meals for the work. And you have to get your mindsets, uh, prepare lists, go shopping, do the, all the all the meals in advance so you don't get so stressed out um i uh, got a lot of cookbooks vegan cookbooks oil free with all the ingredients from the patterson program included and i create all these meals and it makes my life then much easier in the morning i make myself a, a giant green smoothie and with a uh, oatmeal and cinnamon and raw honey. So oh, I love it. <laughs> you you are set. Do you know the yeah. degree of confidence that I have for your future is like ninety nine point nine percent? You're you're set. You are absolutely set for life. And you, I listened to your podcast with Dr. Matthews, and yeah. I'm making fermented oats now. Oh my god, it has such a great effect on me. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I mean, I started with probiotics first, I, low doses. Yeah. And then I bought the uh, probiotics um, with 100 billion CV CFU and 34 strains. Yeah. And <clears throat> that changed actually my level as, on, on inflammation as well. My stiffness in the morning went away after I ate that probiotic um, because I had to go to the restroom two or three times a day. Before it was like twice a week and that changed everything. Okay. Um, my stiffness went away. And when I changed that to fermented oats, I stopped the probiotic and I included the fermented oats. It had the same effect. Oh, my gosh. Okay, there's a lot in this, and I don't want us to just skim over this. So first of all, I know our listeners really love hearing about brands of probiotics. So which probiotic did you buy? I know everyone's going to be wanting to know that. The Garden of Life. Garden it's, of Life. Okay. Yeah, 100 billion CFU, 34 strains. Okay. And yeah. Actually, to tell you the truth, I um, almost wanted to return the bottle because within three hours I was so bloated and I had to go uh, to the restroom. And I thought, okay, it has a bad side effect. But I said, okay, um, maybe I'll keep the bottle and I keep eating the probiotic. So I ate it after, for four days. And on the fourth day, my stiffness in my fingers went away in the morning. Now, um, did the bloating stop even though you persisted with the same probiotic? Uh, no, it didn't stop. I was still having bloating uh, for the, on the fourth day, but I was going very regular. To the bathroom? Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. So when did the bloating stop? Um, maybe after a week. Uh, did go away though? Slowly, yeah. It, it did go away. Uh, when I started the fermented oats, it came all back again. I think there were way more bacteria in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're you know we're playing with real things here, aren't we? Well, we're, it's, yeah. it's like a we're our own little you know medical lab. Experiment. Yeah, because yeah. Th this is, these are real organisms, right? We're not these aren't these aren't innate objects. We're dealing with real life here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're we're I'm putting this together in a little bit of a summary, and I'll I'll say it back to you in a minute to make sure I understood. Um, and now tell me about how did you ferment your oats? Because there's a discussion in our support forum about fermenting oats, and I'd like to get your your um, your I input just, on that. I just followed the instructions from Dr. Matthews that I uh, take a cup of oats. Yep. I put natural kefir in it, yep. and I let it sit for two days, cover it up with a paper towel, and then I put a little bit of raw honey in it and coconut water, uh, unsweetened, yep. and then I just eat it like a yogurt in the morning. 
And, and, and the kefir that you get, where do you source that? Where, where do I store it? No, where do you get it from? Oh, just a normal supermarket. Okay. And is it a water kefir? It's, uh, it says lactose-free. No, lactose-free. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it's Nature Way is the brand. There we go. Okay. Nature Way lactose-free kefir. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so I will get rid of all my probiotics and switch over just to fermented oats because it had the same reaction on my body. Well, it's going to offer you tremendous more benefits than yeah. than taking the probiotic and far cheaper. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So <laughs> I I can't um, I can't say for sure whether or not that's completely dairy free, lactose free, or would suggest that it is. Um, but if people, I don't want anyone to to get all arms up in the air if it's not and who's listening if it's not one hundred percent dairy free. Um, because um, uh, it's not that I want to endorse it if it if it does contain dairy, but let's remember that during the fermentation process, all of the proteins get broken down to to amino acids, and all of the fats get broken down to fatty acids, and so um, it's quite different uh, food than if you were to buy a um, bottle of milk or a carton of milk from the shelf. I mean, we're talking about completely different. Uh, effects on our body. So ideal would be dairy-free, but uh, if that one is working for you right now and it just happens to, under a microscope, contain some uh, dairy element, um, then, you know, keep in mind both for us both and also for listeners that, you know, it's a far cry from just buying milk off the shelf, that particular food Mm -hmm. uh, that you're eating there. It's so pre-digested and broken down already. Um, Okay, that's that's super exciting. And did you get the Nature Way lactose free kefir from Whole Foods or another sort of um, health food store? No, it's just a regular supermarket. I mean, here in Texas, it's well known. It's called AGB. <laughs> AGB. AGB. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, great. Okay, well that's excellent. And so you would uh, uh, follow the steps uh, that you outlined a moment ago, putting it together. And how long would you wait? Just two or three days. For the for the fermenting, two days. Two days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Yes. All right. Beautiful. And then after it's done, do you then warm it up so that it's no? no you eat oh, it just, cold. I eat it cold. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm afraid if I heat it up, it will kill the bacteria. That's what I was going to ask, and you're yeah. absolutely spot on. And that's why I checked. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're a, you are a setting a great standard here for us. This is fantastic. And I make something I, else. I make my own kombucha now. Oh, look at you go! You're, <laughs> you're excelling. Yeah, so I started brewing about two months ago. Okay, so talk us through that. I'm, let, let. I'm really enjoying that too. So oh. that's helping me, I think so too, because I was buying all these bottles and they're expensive too. Yes. And this is now a fraction of the cost. It's a fraction of the cost and it doesn't contain all of the necessary uh, superfluous ingredients to keep its right. shelf life up. Yeah. Um, so talk us through your kombucha. This is This is fun. Anybody can order a starter kit. I got it on Amazon, the deluxe kit. It comes with the bottle, the big gallon jar, the scoby, um, the tea, the sugar, the bottles. um, And um, it gives you detailed instruction. Anybody can do it. It's so simple. Right. Now, with regards to temperatures, if there's people listening in cold parts or very hot parts of the world. Um, I'm lucky to be here in Texas. Um, I keep it now in my house 70 degrees. Okay. So it's working fine. Right, so you air condition that to a controlled temperature, and then you know that it's always going to work well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's delicious. And I have my little herb garden. I use my mint uh, and basil in the in the kombucha, and um, so I'm fermenting the second stage with flavor. So it's delicious. Oh my god, I want to come visit <laughs> your house. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy. We- so it's a whole the whole program changed my life, and. Um, I'm baking my own bread now, and um, it's pretty neat because it's out of quinoa, buckwheat, and oats, oh and God. it's oil-free. So um, I make two loaves. I bake two loaves per week. I freeze it, and I make toast in for lunch, and uh, it's delicious. And it's much better than the bread in, in the supermarket. It's, I mean, that tastes like cardboard, and it's very expensive. And this one also saves me money. Oh, fantastic. That, that, that's wonderful. Um, I might have to get you to uh, create some videos for our audience. 
yeah. Just some well, training videos. A lot of research. I mean, I have spent a lot of time on the computer uh, researching for recipes. I mean, there are a lot of vegan uh, on the internet who are oil free and they post their recipes. So, and, uh, and I'll just experiment and some recipes I don't like, I will not repeat. And some recipes I just keep and I love them. I keep redoing them. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, what does, how has your husband embraced your change of lifestyle? He's very, very supportive. Um, he eats all the meals I cook. I mean, once in a while I'll make a sausage for him and he eats that with the lentils and the rice and all that. But, um, uh, it's no problem whatsoever. I mean, if I have to make a separate meal for him once in a while, it's fine. But 90% he eats all the meals I eat. Okay. Well, fantastic. Right. Another, another yeah, example yeah, of how easier. it makes it easier. Well, it makes it so much easier. And in fact, you know, it's, it's just so hard when you've got this conflict and it might not be verbal conflict but just an energy conflict where people in the yeah. family don't want to eat what you're eating. It, it, it basically um, almost says, look, I don't approve of what you're doing in a sub mm -hmm. subconscious way. Um, well, in the beginning he was skeptic too, but then he sees the improvement I have. I mean, he can see my hands. He sees the swelling is going down. He sees I can do sports again. Before I was just sitting on the sideline. I said, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't, I'm in so much pain. Now I can participate with mountain biking again. We go kayaking again. Before, um, when I was kayaking, uh, after a three, four hour trip, I couldn't even straighten out my hands. I had to use my other hand to straighten out my fingers. They were like trigger fingers. And now it's like I have movements, all, no zero pain. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that's why we do this, isn't it? We want to get back yeah. and live normal yeah. lives. Yeah. You know, it's like if we're going to prepare to you know, do some significant thing in our life. We have to put in a lot of preparation and discipline and effort. If we're going to go and climb Mount Everest, I think, you know, I don't know exactly how long people have to prepare for Everest, but I believe it's sort of the of the order of multiple years to get ready to climb Everest. I mean, you don't just show up at the at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. Um, and so if we're, if we are investing in to do something remarkable, which is to live a life pain free or on as minimal drugs required and have tremendous, you know, outlook for the rest of our life, then we have to put the work in just like any other thing that that's significant. And, yeah. um, you know, now you're, you're getting the payoffs and it's exciting because, uh, you know, all the other potential health crises that you would have potentially hit just by being, you know, in a Western society and, uh, uh, you know, you've, you've minimized all of those to a negligible level yeah. and your husband too, I bet that he's probably seen some health improvements as well by sort of pity backing your efforts. Oh yeah. He says he's way more energetic. He gets his green smoothie in the morning and he actually loves the green smoothie. He got hooked on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, Put everything what you always say in the Pedersen program. I put the celery, the cucumber, the greens, everything in it, the beets and the banana and papaya, and it's every morning our energy drink. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, I can't say anything more than perfection, you know. It's just yeah. so exciting to 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 see this play out in your life and you know, I just Words can't describe how happy that makes me feel. This is why I put all this stuff on paper after I went through all this and just thought, you know, M Melissa said if we can just help one person, it's worth it, you know, because there's so much work involved. And then, you know, just to listen and, and you know, I just want to reach out and give you a hug, but we're, you know, yeah. we're a bit far away for that. But and, maybe we'll get and to I'm sharing. I'm sharing it, uh, all the information at work So because pe uh, there are other people at work who are my same age who have suffered a similar problems. And they're starting to change their diet. They're not going to the Pedersen program, but they're cutting out meats, fish, and dairy. So they're they're cha changing as well because they see the change in me. Wow. And even my dermatologist is on board. That's what I like because um, I watch those two documentaries. You more likely know the fork over knives and the what the hell's. Hmm. And so she watched it too, and then she saw my improvement, and she says, "I'm supporting you. We're, we're, I'm not prescribing you any more medication." and uh, come back in february and i'm supporting you 100 percent. wow and that's your rheumatologist mm -hmm. that's awesome and and you said that she watched these videos as well did you give them to her or recommend them to her yeah and she said she watched it with her son and so and she believes actually in diet and medication sure not just sorely diet and but so she prescribed me for four months the meloxicam 
But after three weeks, I got so dizzy. I told her I had to give it up. And then she said, I understand. And I didn't have any improvements with the meloxicam. Nothing changed. Uh, she even gave me a steroid shot. It didn't help. And then she says, okay, since the medication is not working and the, the diet seems to be working, why don't you continue with the diet and see me in February? If the symptoms come back, you have pains or anything, call me immediately. But uh, nothing so far has changed. So I will see you in February and just say it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so and even the first appointment I had, I was already on the medicine program uh, three weeks and my first appointment I sat down she says so how are you today and I said I'm doing good she said oh my god it has never happened to her in her career that somebody says I'm doing good and I said yeah I'm pain-free since three weeks because of this program and then she said oh wow that's strange <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny you know yeah that's great so imagine if everyone did that. Imagine if they get diagnosed, they immediately start this program before they even see the rheumatologist. So by the time they even see the rheumatologist, which as we know can sometimes take a couple of months because of the, the backlog. Yeah, that's um, the reason I actually started your program because it took two months to get the appointment and I um, started researching on the internet and I uh, joined two groups on Facebook. There's a Facebook group, Rheumatoid Arthritis Natural Healing, and a, a Facebook group, Rheumatoid Arthritis Support Group. The Natural Healing are talking a lot about your program. And 90% of the people were saying they had success with your program. 10% maybe say, oh no, they couldn't deal with the buckwheat and the quinoa and it would give them pains. And I said, well, 90% is, is a good success. I'll start the program. Yes. And here I am and it's perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. And I always have solutions for those 10% too. Yeah. So if we have people listening that think they're in that 10%, there's, yeah. there's not a person who I don't, with a 100% conviction, believe that we can get out of a mess. Um, and so, you know, I'm glad that, you know, that in, a, in an environment that I'm not even involved, I'm not in that group. Um, I, I, uh, um, well, I, I did join for a while. I don't know if I still get notifications or whatever, but I haven't poked my head in there for many, many months. And it's yeah. great that the, that uh, there is a lot of positivity because yeah, we know everybody's that. speaking about your program. So many people are saying so many good things about your program. And I noticed the people who um, don't do the program or have no success, they give up easily after two or three weeks. Yeah. And, and it takes a long time. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Um, I mean, a disease that, you know, it's not natural for your body to work against itself in this manner. It's an extremely um, unnatural situation yeah. that has evolved into an autoimmune disease. So, you know, prior to the 1960s, as I've said a fair few times before, there was no evidence of any kind of rheumatoid arthritis in Africa, which I believe you've, you know, you're originally from. Um, and the reason being most easily explained uh, is that there were no, you know, McDonald's, there were no KFCs, there was no fast food out, out, uh, outlets. But, but even taking a step further than that, um, people were just pretty much eating plants because meat's too expensive. Uh, no, these are, these are humble communities, humble foods, and people are living off, uh, you know, foods that you can grow and that you can cultivate in your own little space. In your own bit of land. Yeah. Well, this has been super fun. Um, so thanks for sharing. We've just uh, used up our time really quick. I've, I've, this has been a lot of fun. I love talking about, um, you know, ways in which we can, you know, continue to take matters into our own hands and, and be, um, uh, you know, proactive and resourceful. And you've been all of those things, definitely. So what I'd like to do is uh, definitely uh, extend you a uh, guest uh, membership uh, for our support group and, uh, and come join us and answer questions for those people who'd, who probably want to ask some more about the uh, fermentation process, the bread making process. And I might actually uh, commission you to uh, go and make some videos for us. So we can talk about that okay. and you can, yeah, we'll that. <laughs> that'd be great. And we can upload them into our support group. And so, um, members can then go and watch those and uh, adds a lot more value to their lives as well. So thanks so much, Irene, for coming well, on this thank episode. You. you changed my life, Clint. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's, I'll tell you what, it, it feels wonderful to hear those words. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, you're very, very welcome. And uh, just stay on the call uh, once we wrap this uh, recording up 
and we can talk a little bit more. So thanks again. Thank you.